Hello again. Well, this is the one that you voted for on my Facebook page. Link in the description. It's the Newton and Chambers car carrier, a Southern Pride kit. So, out of the box, we've got the vacuum formed plastic roof, the brass sides, the car well, a, pl a plastic bag containing the transfers, some instructions and the ribbing strips. And another bag containing the resin ends and uh, bogey side frames, couplings and a few other little bits and pieces. And then there's another bag with uh, the rest of the brass etches. That will be the bogies and uh, fine details. And what railway project that I've done recently wouldn't be complete without written instructions. Very few diagrams to go on. So what I thought I might do is in the title bars on the bottom is I'm going to write the instructions down as they're written uh, so you can see what's going on and then in the corner I'll, I'll try and put a, a box to the corresponding uh, diagram. So let's get going by ignoring the instruction sheet and going straight to the wheels, bogies. Now the most important thing about this kit is cleanliness. So I spent the next 40 minutes, half an hour, just going over every bit of brass with some wet and dry. I think it's 800. I like to start with the wheels. I'm not sure why. Something about building from the bottom up. Cutting the bogies out. You can see again that I'm doing more than one. So as a little bit of a side competition guesstimate sort of thing, see how many you think I'm doing at once. There's no prizes, just a bit of fun. Anyway, so my bending machine that I first made an appearance in the Brute Trolley uh, video has come back and I bought it specifically for this project but the brute one was uh, just so I could get the hang of using it and because they've been sitting under the bench for a long time as well and my messy soldering skills get to be viewed again mind you I've learned that if you solder from the inside then there's very little clean up on the outside at this point I would normally leave the wheels out so they can be painted and so that the the bogey can be painted separately but I did try it and it was the the, the fit was so tight that there was going to be massive distortion of the bogey frames so I had to put the wheels in at this point there will be a word that pops up on the screen in a second that describes the type of glue that we uh, stick the side uh, cosmetic side frames on with. I can't even say it, but it equates to super glue. I use Deluxe Materials Rocket Odorless. For the continuity spotters, you'll notice in a minute that I didn't stick all of these on at the same time because I wasn't convinced it was the right thing to do. But for continuity of the film, they're on now. Anyway, uh, to bend the sole bars up next, or the, the main body shell, and it wasn't quite, it was just a bit longer than my bending uh, frame, so I had to do it in two stages. Then, because I needed a lot of heat, I had to break out Big Bertha, insert 70s humour, 
which is my Weller 75 watt soldering iron because the my normal Antex 18 just wouldn't get hot enough to even melt the um, solder on this job. Put in a fillet of solder all the way down that line just to keep the the, the sole bar floor of the vehicle solid. Next up was the car well which after I'd bend it up and put it on I then had issues with it not as as in the, the model form you'll see in a minute as it says in the instructions this is possibly the easiest part to bend up and then again I soldered the joints just to give it a bit of rigidity and keep it all nice and tight with this being the easiest bit, the next bit wasn't quite as easy. Bending the angle for the sole bar was a right pain. In fact, it wouldn't bend for a start off, which meant I had to score the fold line with my razor saw just to get it to bend. While this is playing out, I'll just uh, while this is playing out, I'll just tell you a bit, little bit about Newton and Chambers because it's quite an interesting story, their company history. So George Newton and Thomas Chambers were partners in the Phoenix Foundry at Snow Hill, Sheffield, along with Henry Longdon. They signed a lease to extract coal and ironstone from the Thorncliffe Valley. A 21-year lease was signed in December 1793 and it gave them the mining rights to the Thorncliffe Valley. And they set up their works on a site near Chapeltown, north of, just north of Sheffield. By the end of the 19th century, the company were not only mining coal and heavy ironstone, but building blast furnaces, coke ovens and had a chemical plant as well. Iron cast in their foundry was used on two iconic structures, that being Tower Bridge across the Thames and the Eddiston Lighthouse. The company became more of a group, having many brand names under its umbrella, one of those being Isel, the toilet paper that everybody loves to hate. In 1972, the group was taken over by the industrial holding company Central and Sherwood. This was acquired by Robert Maxwell in the 1980s and became TransTech PLC in 1991, after merging with Geoffrey Robinson's company Transfer Technology. TransTech went into receivership at the end of 1999. In 2001, Newton and Chambers and Company had ceased trading and was dissolved. Transtech was dissolved the following year. Back to the model. With the construction of the chassis now complete, I was still had to use the big soldering iron because it acts as a heat sink to get all the uh, small details soldered on. I didn't put the handbrake wheel on at this stage because I, it was too delicate and I thought it'd just get knocked so I put the connecting rod on but didn't put the wheel on. Next stage was uh, bending up the body. Again it was a bit too long for my bending bars so I had to do it in a double, double stretch and the instructions when read sound more complicated than what it actually was. I was enjoying the build at this point and even wasn't worried about my fingers being golden but things were about to take a turn. That was the last bit of bending and I was glad to actually finally get some shape and form ready to start assembling the body. 
So it started resembling the vehicle that we're actually trying to build. Now once I got these little bits glued on the, the ends and the nut soldered onto them, I could then temporarily mock up the chassis and the ends ready to offer up the side, the body sides. So with the mock up on the on the bench and the bogies temporarily attached as well, something didn't seem to look quite right. And when it doesn't look right, it needs investigating. So I'll link some reference pictures in the in the description and this one will be reference picture one. So at this stage I noticed that the well seem to be a little bit deep. A little bit of guesswork and measuring pictures, I reckoned that the well seemed to be about four millimetres too deep. It needed to be about level with the bottom of the bogies. Roughly where the pencil is about now. So I built a mock-up out of plastic card to see how it would look if I took them off and chopped a chunk out and it looked a whole lot better and the lining it lined up a lot better as well so the unenviable task of chopping four millimeters off of a brass box didn't hold much enthusiasm for me but anyway I got on with it and did it soldered them back on and again like the mock-up it looked a whole lot better that set me back at least a day anyhow back to the body and as it says in the instructions don't rely on the super glue to hold the sides on so soldering spaces between the two body sides was done next and then once I'd glued the ends on with super glue, I then reinforced that bond with Araldite or whatever it's called these days. Two part epoxy glue. The stickiest substance known to man. Well, apart from barbecue sauce on ribs that is. And before I did anything else, I decided to give everything a, a decrease and wash in the sink, the kitchen sink, where else? And I won't do the wife's toothbrush joke either, she'll realise. Cutting the roof out, it's already pre-cut, but it needs a lot of fitting, fettling to get it right. It's, there seems to be quite a lot of excess and a lot of filing chopping, refitting, test fitting before it was glued on. Unsurprisingly this this build is quite difficult and it's taken a lot of work and a lot of time and I'm going to need a rest afterwards. So in the upcoming week or two I'm going to be trying to uh, free up some disk space and I'll be uploading some videos from our trip to Miniature Wonderland in Hamburg. And I highly recommend anybody that's going out that way pop in because it is just epic. And you'll need to be there all day. Half a day won't cut it. Just go for all day. It is just fabulous. I might also l upload some work videos as well, see if I can free up even more space. Marking out the roof was quite easy. I actually cut the, photocopied the instructions and then cut out the, the template and then marked them all on like that. The idea behind these ta uh, sticky t labels is they're three part. So the outside you peel off then you paint over the, the inside two pieces 
and then the inside piece then is removed after painting which reveals the white of the roof and then you adjust that to make it look like a perspex roof. Windows, skylights. Equally these really thin strips of tape uh, represent the metal strapping holding the fiberglass sides on. The last job was putting the buffers on. They needed just a little bit of clean up but they were really nice moulding. Then it was off to, well not quite the paint booth because I did it outside. It was primer, Halford's grey primer. I did it outside because inside my garage it's not that ventilated and this stuff really does get on your chest. After primer it was three about three coats of rail match rail blue and then masking and then rail grey. While we watch this paint dry I'll just tell you about Newton and Chambers and these vehicles. Their predecessors Built in 1959 as a freight wagon to diagram 2293 and coded tear wag. And they looked exactly like the Hornby Triang car transporter wagon. I don't think they saw much use and would, were with. I don't think they saw much use and would were withdrawn quite quickly. And these wagons must have been a development of those or very similar to them and they were built for the East Coast main line as motor rail vehicles. Being passenger rated they had slightly different bogies and were fitted with through steam heat pipes and Four or five of them in their later life ended up with through electric wiring as well. Fourteen of them were built, numbered 96286 to, through to 96299. They were introduced in 1961 and the last ones were withdrawn in 1986. They were... F they were <coughs> they're also fitted for continental use as well but whether they actually did that or not is very doubtful in their early years some seem to work through to Newton Abbott from Sheffield and York most of their working lives they seem to be on King's Cross Edinburgh or York in Venestra uh, services with the main body colours down blue and rail grey. It was then time for two thin coats of gloss varnish and then some detail painting of which was the buffers, the buffer beam and then all the levers and uh, hand wheels on the sole bars. I'm still not sure what this lever does either This on this red background and the yellow lever. It's reported to be a brake rate switch, but it's not, and I, I can't seem to think what it is. And that paintbrush looks bloody awful in close-up. I'll have to get a new one. Then back up to the roof to take the middle part of the uh, roof lights out, which reveals the skylights, perspex skylights. I'll drop a bit of a wash in there and do that when I do the weathering later on. Next was putting some transfers on and these come with the kit and they are dry transfers or press fix. Which press them on, get them in position and then just a tiny bit of water just to release the backing paper. After fitting all the transfers on, and these were probably some of the best white lines I've ever done, 
it was then a case of two thin coats of uh, satin varnish to seal everything in. Out with the dry brush with some metallic uh, gun metal just to bring out some details on the bogies and on the uh, cast ends. I was very aware at this stage that we'd created essentially a metal box and when I test run them on the railway they sounded very hollow so I decided to fill them with bubble wrap just to deaden the, the hollowness sound. I really enjoyed this build even if it was right on the edge of my modelling capabilities. So I said at the beginning could you work out how many that I've built in this go? If you said three, you were nearly right. I actually built three and upgraded a fourth, one that I built about ten years ago. My critical eye then noticed when they were on the railway that they ride in a little bit too high in the body and when I measured them I needed to lose about three to four millimetres in the body. But I couldn't do anything about it now, so they'll have to stay as they are. Thanks for watching. See you next time.